We know you're in there. We received reports that you're driving recklessly, so we're here to check out what's going on. We think maybe you were drinking and driving. You never saw me driving. You can't arrest me. Yes, they can. The police can prosecute you for DUI and even other offenses, even if they never saw you driving. How is that possible? And how can you avoid being arrested? A few weeks back, I made a video about a police officer being arrested for a DUI, but this was after he was already in his own home, and a bunch of you were confused about one issue. The police did not see the driver behind the wheel. Billy asked, but how can they charge him with DUI if they didn't actually apprehend him driving a car? All they really have is a person intoxicated at their own home, don't they? I hear that same objection here in my office from clients who are in these situations. But for the cops to charge you with a crime, all they need is probable cause that an offense happened and that you're the person who probably did it. Probable cause is a low standard that really just means more likely than not. And the technical term for this is it's an evidentiary burden that the prosecution has to prove. They don't have to prove that you actually did the thing in order to arrest you. They just have to prove that it's likely you did the thing. Now to convict you of the charge, the cops do have to present evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that you actually did the thing you're accused of. But keep in mind, this does not mean proof beyond all doubt, just a reasonable doubt. So if the cops don't see you do the actual thing, what evidence do they use to try to convict you in court? People's words. That's it. Most routine criminal and traffic cases are prosecuted and convicted solely based on people saying what they saw and heard. No video, no fingerprints, no DNA, just people's words. Check out this comment from Bob and see if you agree or disagree. The fact that he was not seen operating his car by the police and the only evidence the police have against him is from his, the call to complain about his driving skills and the fact that he was in his house and was drunk doesn't matter at all because of the simple fact that the police didn't see him in his car at any time. So he actually has a very good chance of getting the case dismissed. Bob is correct that the police don't see the actual driving of the car in some cases. This typically happens in accident cases where the police arrive on scene after the driving has ceased and everyone's out of the cars. They typically use simple investigative techniques to try to prove what happened and to prove that you were driving the car. Good evening, sir. Can you tell me what happened here? I was just driving home from work. I lost control of the car and slid over into this lamppost. Gotcha. Except they don't say the gotcha part on the side of the road, but that's precisely what the cops are thinking when using these simple questions. The cops don't usually tell you that they suspect you of driving drunk or committing some other serious crime. They just ask what happened and people talk. And then the cops use your own words to prove later in court that you were the driver of the vehicle. So when the cops arrive at your front door, it's pretty much the same as them arriving at the scene of a crash. They don't tell you that they suspect you of a DUI. They simply ask where you've been, when you got home, and if you have anything to say about the calls of a reckless driver who is driving your vehicle. Sometimes they may ask simple questions like, is this your truck out here in the driveway? The cops use these techniques all the time and people talk to them all the time. Your own words become the evidence that the cops use later in court to prove that you operated the vehicle. In order to convict you of a DUI, they do need at least slight corroboration that a crime actually occurred. This is known as the corpus delicti rule. And this is where the cops will usually subpoena the person who called 911 claiming that a vehicle with your license plates was driving recklessly. Ah, but what if you got drunk only after you arrived home? Dallas commented, if this reenactment is even close to how it went down, I see no way to get a conviction. They need to prove he was the person driving the vehicle and they have to prove he was drinking before he arrived at his home. Inasmuch as this shows him answering the door while drinking, just because the vehicle is registered to him does not prove he was the driver. In Virginia, it is a defense to a DUI if you can prove that you got drunk only after you drove. In some states like Pennsylvania, it's not a defense. All the state has to prove in some states is that you registered a 0.08 or higher at the time that the police made you take the breathalyzer at the station. Side note, breath tests on the side of the road are optional in almost every state. To learn more about why that is, check out this video. Again, your own words are likely to tank your case. The cops know that they need to prove when you became drunk, and they're trained to ask simple questions to try to establish those facts for a DUI investigation. 
They're trained to ask when your last drink was, and most people want to distance themselves from alcohol. So most people guess that their last drink was a while ago when asked by the officer. This makes it sound like you're not drunk now because your last drink was quite a while ago, even with dinner. The investigation goes something like this. How much have you had to drink tonight? Nothing at all. Look, sir, I smell alcohol and your speech is slurred. I can't help you if you're not honest with me about how much you had to drink. I only had two beers. And when was your last drink? Probably an hour ago at dinner. You just walked into another one of Officer Andy's traps. You just gave him the key evidence that he needs to prove that you were drunk at the time of the driving. But what if you're a regular viewer of this channel and you don't talk to the police? Well, then the cops try to use a forensic science technique known as retrograde extrapolation. In a nutshell, if they know that you blew, let's say a 0.10 at the time of the official breathalyzer at the station, they can try to use an expert in toxicology to explain alcohol absorption and elimination and literally try to go back in time and calculate what your blood alcohol level would have been at a specific point in time. But this is complicated science that doesn't always work in the state's favor and it can be hard for them to establish. This is why your own statements are usually the key evidence that the police use to prove that you were drunk when you actually drove the car. So what are two easy ways to protect yourself from a DUI when the cops didn't even see you drive? First, don't do it in the first place. Never drink and drive. Second, don't talk to the police. Don't fall for one of Officer Andy's slick traps. To learn how to avoid more police traps, check out this next video about DUI checkpoints. I'll see you there. And say it with me now, don't talk to the police.